I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. This week I'd like to answer some questions about June bugs. As their name suggests, June bugs are most visible in June and it seems like this year we've been inundated with them. But if you weren't out after dark, you might not even have noticed them. While out on my nightly walk with Augie, there were so many June bugs flying around neighborhood lawns that it sounded like it was raining. It was funny to watch Augie's reaction when he got pelted in the face with them. With so many June bugs flying around this year, it was no surprise that my phone was ringing off the hook with questions about them. While the adults are simply a nuisance, the larvae of this beetle can be damaging in landscapes, especially in turf grass. And with so many adults flying around this year, it's likely that we now have lots of larvae developing in our yards. As you know, June bugs, especially male June bugs, are attracted to light. So the best way to keep them from annoying you is to turn off all outdoor lights at night. The females are more often found buzzing around in the landscape, since after they mate, they begin to look for a nice, soft place to lay their eggs. And to make sure that those eggs are protected, females burrow up to five inches underground. As with most insects, knowing the life cycle is critical to controlling the June bugs, whose larvae are referred to as white grubs. There are many different beetles that have white grub larvae, some of which are no threat to your plants. Non-threatening ones include those that you might find in your compost pile where they're actually beneficial. But if you have a problem with white grubs in your landscape, you should definitely treat for them, and timing is critical. Early stages of growth, when the larvae are small and actively feeding, are the only time that you can kill them. This occurs from about mid-June through early July, so now would be a perfect time to treat. And if you'd like to use beneficial nematodes to do so, which are great for controlling white grubs, it's important that you get the right species of nematode, since each species of nematode only attacks specific species of white grubs. June bugs are actually June beetles, so when reading labels on potential products to purchase, you'll see June beetle on the label. Regret regrettably, I'll have to cut this discussion short since the fabulous CTG producer has not given me an entire program to devote to grubworms. But we'd be happy to send you more details. You can contact CTG through our website or send me an email and we'll send you links to some extension publications with all the information you'll need to control grubworms. You can find my contact information with a simple internet search for my name. Our plant this week is cassia, which makes a beautiful evergreen addition to most any landscape. Drought and heat tolerance are at the top of the list of plant characteristics for most people these days, and this plant has plenty of both. It'll thrive with only once a week watering and will survive on much less. The gorgeous yellow flowers that cover cassia in summer are a bonus since the vibrant green leaves are beautiful enough by themselves all year round. As with most naturally shrubby desert species, cassia can be trained into a small tree if you prefer or you can leave it bushy and full since it has a naturally round, pleasing shape with absolutely no pruning whatsoever. Cassia can take the worst of our intense summer heat and sunlight, so if you have a spot with reflected heat where nothing else seems to grow, cassia would be a good choice. It also takes the worst of our Central Texas cold snaps and has survived in our demonstration garden at the Extension Office through some uncommonly cold winters. For a shrub, it doesn't take much space, only getting about five feet tall and wide. We have another great viewer photo this week, snapped at my very own garden at the Extension Office. At our recent demonstration field day, Master Gardener Cheryl Williams showed off their fabulous upcycled compost screen. Her husband, Ed Kimball, used the handles from a broken down wheelbarrow to make the handles of the screen. Great idea. And this week in your garden, it's time to plant pumpkins. We love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org ctg with your questions and plants from your garden. Mm -hmm.